Hello, and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a feminist. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's story. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. On this day in 1979, Margaret Thatcher became the first woman prime minister of the United Kingdom. A member of the British Conservative Party, Thatcher was also the first woman prime minister in Europe at large. She served an impressive three consecutive terms before 1979 and 1990 when she resigned from office. Let's look back at Prime Minister Thatcher's legacy. When Thatcher took office in 1979, it was still uncommon for women to be elected into such a high leadership position. The first woman prime minister, Siri Mavo Bandaranaike of Sri Lanka, was elected just 19 years prior. Think about it. Even in the U.S., we still have yet to elect a woman as our president, and our first female vice president only took office in 2021. There's a long way to go for us, still when it comes to going towards gender equality and world leadership positions, but since Thatcher's election, dozens more women have been elected to president and prime minister roles in countries like New Zealand, India, Greece, Finland, Belgium, Ethiopia, Barbados, and more. Representation is important, and it's valuable for young girls to see that they can achieve anything they set their mind to. At the same time, just because a woman makes history doesn't mean that she will be a good leader. Prime Minister Thatcher is a controversial figure in contemporary history. She earned the nickname the Iron Lady because of her harsh, unyielding leadership style. On one hand, this nickname feels gendered, as though... Because she's a woman, she was expected to be more accommodating and pliant. On the other hand, she was quite set in her ways, and her policies were often harmful to working-class people. The term Thatcherism emerged to describe the Prime Minister's conservative policies. In her early years as Prime Minister, she attacked labor unions. And in order to cut government spending during a recession, she cut funding to social services. Instead, she pushed for the privatization of housing and transit, Around the same time, in 1981, Ronald Reagan was elected president of the U.S., and he became a close ally of Thatcher's. They each faced economic recessions in their own countries, and they both sought to fix their economies by reducing government spending, income tax, and government regulation. These questions about how to develop a successful economy still continue today. Right-wing politicians who work in the same tradition as Thatcher or Reagan might argue that businesses are what keep a country afloat. By taxing businesses, their ability to grow is limited, and the growth of industry is a priority for the country's private citizens to make money. On the other hand, left-wing politicians argue that taxation gives the government a revenue stream, and if the government gets more funding, it can redistribute those funds towards social projects like affordable housing, better schools, accessible health care, and more. Reagan's economic policies, referred to as Reaganomics, earned another nickname, trickle-down economics. This was the idea that as wealthy business owners get richer, their wealth will eventually trickle down to the working class, since industry will be booming. When you think about living through a pandemic in the U.S., I think it's safe to say that the concept of trickle-down economics does not work. The employment rate skyrocketed from about 3% to 14% in April 2020, and a year later, 6% of people remained unemployed. While our economy slowly inches towards recovery, large companies like Amazon, Tesla, and Google have boomed. If a global crisis benefits the rich, isn't there something wrong? Thatcher's economic policies caused unemployment to get even worse, but still, she was re-elected after the British won the Falklands War against Argentina in 1982. Her troubles in office continued, though. In 1984, after standing harshly against Irish separatists who didn't want to be under British control, the Irish Republican Army attempted to assassinate her by bombing the Brighton Hotel, where a Conservative Party conference took place. She survived, but five of her cabinet members did not. She was elected for a third term in 1987 after the economy recovered a bit, 
but in 1990, she resigned after serving one of the longest terms in British history. So, Margaret Thatcher isn't quite remembered as a feminist role model. Sure, she was a powerful woman, and I want to see more women serve in government. But in order to imagine a thoughtful, intersectional form of feminism, we need to understand that just having women in power isn't enough. We need people, regardless of their gender, who advocate for all kinds of people, not just those who they think are worth advocating for. Now let's talk about music. Today, in 1959, the first ever Grammy Awards took place. Aired on ABC, this event took place simultaneously in both Beverly Hills, California, and New York City. Now there are over 80 Grammy categories, but at the first ceremony, only 22 Grammys were awarded. The Italian singer-songwriter Dominique Modungo took home both Record of the Year and Song of the Year. Ella Fitzgerald, a jazz icon, also took home two awards that year. Record of the Year refers to the overall production of a track, while Song of the Year celebrates composition and writing. The Grammys began because the Oscars and Emmys already existed for film and TV, and industry professionals wanted to host a similar ceremony for musicians. Some people say that the Grammys were also created to outshine the growing genre of rock and roll. But clearly, that didn't work out. Now, there are entire categories dedicated to rock music, with U2 being the most lauded band at the Grammys with 22 awards. And now, for our final segment of the day, I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a May 4th in my life. On May 4th, 2018, I cried in my prom dress. Yep, you hear it you heard it here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I have a photo here of the moment that I cried in my prom dress, of the moment that inspired me to write prom dress, which I released in 2019, a year pretty much after I had that experience. And I've posted the selfie on social media before to celebrate the anniversary of the song, but I owe almost everything to prom dress. I never expected it to take off nearly as much as it did. I thank TikTok for that, and I thank everybody who listens to my songs and continues to listen to my songs, even after um, hearing Prom Dress, if that was the first song that you heard from me. Uh, yeah, I, I never knew that a song about crying would be the reason I have a lot of my job currently and the reason that I've continued to be able to have the privilege of making something that uh, means something to me and sharing it with people, whether that's a podcast or whether that's music or even visual arts assets or whatever it is. So thank you. Um, thanks for for taking my my sad moment of my life and allowing me to make art out of it and and liking it. So yeah, I cried in my prom dress on May 4th, 2018. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.